Hey everybody, Andy Ryder here with Project Lab. Today I'd like to introduce a new series called Project 600. This MIG welding machine and the gas to run it costs about 600 bucks. So the goal of this series is to see how long it takes to cover that $600 price tag. I'll highlight some projects that could justify such a purchase and maybe even save you some cash in the long run. For the first project we're gonna be fixing, a free shovel I got from my brother. This thing is a little rusty, but otherwise it doesn't look like it's in too bad a shape. Until you take a closer look and it actually has a tear along the stem of the shovel. I'm apprehensive to use it on anything out of fear that it's just gonna rip the rest of the way. Looks like a new shovel like this ranges from 12 bucks to 32 bucks. I think we'd say this would be worth about 25 bucks. So let's see if we can use the MIG welder to fix it. First, we need to get the metal shovel blade off of the wooden handle. So we're gonna use a grinding disc on the angle grinder to cut off one side of this rivet and then we'll drive it out. Next we'll clean up the metal around the brake with the wire wheel on the bench grinder. This should help the weld penetrate the metal better. And now with the shovel head clamped in a bench vise, we can try to close up the gap between the two sides of the rip. Yes! Now we'll check our metal thickness. It's about .076, which translates to H7. And now we'll weld. I'm gonna try to push the metal into place to get that crack tightened up as I weld along here. I'll do a series of spot welds instead of one long bead to avoid melting through the metal. Blew a tiny little hole into it, but I fixed it. There's no crack in the metal on the other side, but I'm gonna do a preemptive weld along this area anyway, just to try to strengthen it a bit. And now I can use the angle grinder to smooth out the weld. This looks a little rough, so I'm just gonna sand it down with some 80 grit sandpaper. I wasn't planning on doing any work beyond the welding on this, but it feels weird just leaving that unprotected, so I'm just gonna use a wire brush. Take off most of the rust and dirt, then we'll clean the metal with some alcohol. We'll do a primer coat with Rust-Oleum Rust Reformer. The can says it instantly converts rust to a protected paintable surface. And then for a top coat, we'll use Rust-Oleum Universal Advanced Formula Satin Black. Now that the paint's dry, we can reattach the blade to the handle. First, we'll coat the handle with some boiled linseed oil to protect the wood. And then I'm gonna lay my rag and gloves outside to dry because boiled linseed oil generates heat as it evaporates and that can start a fire. And then we'll orient the handle so that the rings of the wood grain are on the sides with straight grain on the top. This is the strongest orientation of the wood grain and it should keep the handle from breaking under heavy use and we'll pound the handle against the board on the ground to seat it. Ideally, I would use a rivet to reattach the handle at this point, but it's 92 degrees out. I'm sweating just standing here, so we're gonna use a carriage bolt instead. This is a quarter 20 bolt with a nylon lock nut. It doesn't look as good, but it's a little faster, and it's still pretty cheap, maybe 50 cents. While I'm here, I might as well use a file to sharpen the edge of the shovel a little bit. Sorry about the lawnmower in the background. It is the summer. Looks good to me. Let's go give it a try before I get heat stroke. Seems good after the first two minutes of work. Was this worth it? Oh yeah. It was easy and fast and it would have been even quicker if I had skipped the painting. My test of the repaired shovel was pretty limited, but even if it tears again, I can just weld it again. If that happens, I probably would put a patch over top to reinforce it in that case. So there we go, the first 25 bucks on the chart for Project 600. If you wanna learn more about replacing shovel handles, I learned a lot about this topic from a video by Wrangler Star on YouTube. I'll link to that below. I hope you like this video. If you want to see more, then consider subscribing. And if you have any thoughts or questions, or any ideas on ways to save money with a MIG welder, please share in the comments below on YouTube. I try to respond to anyone who stops by. Thanks for watching.